Hello world. I think we got this thing going. We're starting to figure out a little bit more about how to get into this and get going. Yep. Cool. I got it. I can actually watch the live screen for a second for the stream for a second while I have the title card up. Just have it be the intro. So that's super cool. Uh, and now let me hide that so it doesn't distract me. I'm going to turn my monitor down. I'm realizing it's pretty bright. It's still set for the daylight time. It is the nighttime time. So we're going to back that off a little bit. Uh, I think my uh, infrared camera uh, shows up tomorrow. So uh, like right now, it's still fine. It's like 9 o'clock, 9.30, whatever. Um, but sometimes when it, later at night, I really... my my eyes get more sensitive to the light or whatever. Um, so I'm going to set up an infrared camera and uh, and do that um, for some of it, uh, I think, which will be kind of funny. Uh, let me see how that font size looks. So I just, I've, I've put in a new card, so bear with me a second because I'm just trying to like check and make sure. I should have actually done a, uh, a slightly different thing and just done a test run, but I guess this could be. Um, profiles. I'm going to bump this font one. Can I see it happen live? I can. Okay, cool. Uh, yeah, it's a little better. So, actually, I should probably. I don't know. Should I make that black and white? I don't know. I'll, I'll mess around with that at another point. I just want to make sure. So, when I try and size these videos so that they'll be okay to read if you're just looking at the standard YouTube um, video player on a standard size desktop or laptop. Uh, that's kind of my target, so uh, I'm still playing around with that to get that. Anyways, um, so I got a new... I've been recording a vlog for a while in my car. Um, I've been recording it on my phone. Uh, but I got a GoPro because I'm trying to get the better quality thing. Uh, and so I shot the first test one today, um, or the first one today. Um, and what I want to do is... I've got a photo import script that I use um, to take all my different photos and move them into a directory structure that I like. Uh, let me see if I actually have any on the machine right now. Um, yeah, so... Uh, in my photo archive, I've got this AWS source directory. Um, and in the source directory, uh, we're gonna have to slide because it's gonna be longer than the thing all on screen. But so this AWS source, that's like where all of my stuff goes. Like I've got some stuff to ingest here, but like when I, when I bring photos onto the computer, they go in this source. Um, I kind of want a single archive where everything's in there. Um, and I'm, Really, this is this is also a little bit of like this was how my bipolar brain was thinking. So I'm actually less. I really needed to have things really specifically in specific places so that I could deal with them, um, and I still kind of like that in general. But I'm less tensed up by it. But I still have the script and I'm still going to use it. Um, I think. I don't know if I am, but we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna get it going anyways. Sorry. My brain's new to me recently, um, but anyway. So the here's the here's the pattern we got. We, we got our we got our source directory. Where we're dropping the stuff. Year, month with leading zero and more stuff in twenty. Yeah. So leading zeros because I want to have it stack inside, um, uh, inside of like a finder window or whatever and like sort. So I'm generally speaking not a fan of leading zeros, but in this point I'm okay with it because I've built it and designed it and whatever and also I've got I'm actually using the um, uh, month names the th three that are coded for the month name um, as well as you can see so it's it's its own little widget it's not like it's not like an ISO 8601 date and then same thing over here with the with the days so year month day um, and the days get leading zeros too I, I think Apple uh, finder actually sorts them one to zero, but like if you're in, if I'm looking at the finder or sometimes in, uh, I think Lightroom maybe, I don't remember, they, I want to force it to leading zeros, right? Whatever. It's, uh, again, I'm not usually a fan, but in this case I liked it. Um, and so when you get into a specific day, then the, the template is always 
AWS, which happens to be my initials and is also Amazon Web Services, and I'm, they owe me money because I had AWS first. Um, if that ever happens, I'm buying us all on an island. Uh, but AWS, because I wanted to like I wanted to be able to send these files around and have it be like stamped for me, but also I wanted that like if I'm ever looking at them in a file system, I want the preface to all kind of be there in the same in the same thing. Um, and then so once again, we get the year month day in. I don't think this is actually one of the ISO standards, but it may be. Um, but year, month, day, so 2020, 01, 01. Um, and then the hour and the minute, uh, this came off the phone. So here's one, actually, let me just look at it first, make sure it's not anything crazy. What is that? Oh, these are like, I think they're snapshots from Animal Crossing. Yeah, I was playing a little Animal Crossing, I guess. I don't know. Uh, oh no, it's from uh, uh, what was that game? It was a game I was playing in January. I don't remember the name of. Whatever. Uh, but here's a better example where you can see year, month, day. So four digits, two digits, two digits. And again, this is where the leading zeros really come to play because you want to make sure that it's that is where it needs to be sorted right. Um, Hour and minute, 23.17. I didn't go to second because I'm trying to look at the style of the, um, or, or the like the, the visual pattern. I could have taken it out longer, but like it felt weird um, to have, uh, you know, like. I just don't like the look of that. Um, because even with the minute, or sorry, even going down to the second, it's possible to have multiple photos shot in the same second, which the first time I was thinking about this, I didn't really think through that because most of the time with my point and shoot camera or with the iPhone camera, you don't shoot that fast, um, or at least you didn't used to, but I've got a SLR and that thing shoots, I don't know, six frames a second or whatever. So that was the first time that, that was one of my first like, Oh crap with this thing. So what I do in the script is, um, you look at the you look at the EXIF data, the the metadata from a photo. You plot this year, month, day, hour, minute, and then you look at the destination directory and you see if there's already another file in there that has that same pattern. And if it does, or sorry, if it doesn't, you give it zero one a. If it if it does find one, it would give it zero two, zero three, zero four. Um, so that makes sure that even if you shoot six frames a second, so it gives me, basically what that does is it gives me, I can have as many photos as I want shot in a second or, or lined up in a second. Um, oh, the other thing is you could have, if you have two cameras, even if you don't shoot them in the same second, if their clocks are a little bit off, it could end up on the same second. So there's a couple other cases there. Um, but so, uh, so that's where the zero one and then the A is, I want my my raw thing to be A, and then like if I make a new version of it, like a, a black and white one, that would be B. Not not B for black and white, but B because you know, or B color correct. B would be a color correct one. C would be a sepia tone one. Again, those are lining up right, but you think get the point. So, anyways, that's that's what the script does, um, and it looks at a couple different directories. It also does it'll. The other thing that it does is it looks and see. So if you rerun the process with the same source folder, or sorry, with the same actual source going to the, the destination, which is called source, which is a little confusing. Um, but if, if, if you pull off the same card, basically, and run the process twice, it does um, uh, MD5 hash comparisons of the file. So if it sees, if it grabs a year, month, day, hour, minute, it goes and it sees that there's already one with that in there, with that same string, it did hashes both the files and sees if the hashes match. Because if it did, then it's the same file and you can just skip it and move on to the next one. Because if you didn't have that, it was just, and if it was just looking at the, um, at the date string or the, at the uh, file name string and saw a duplicate every time you ran it, if you kept running it on the same, um, the same card, it would just keep adding new files and new files and new files, even though there are duplicates all the way down. So that's the other thing that it does. I think that's all it does. Um, can't remember if it puts copyright information in there or whatever. Um, so here's the trick. I haven't run that script since January. It is now September. 
I don't totally remember where all this stuff is. So, um, import photos. Actually, give me one second. I just want to pull this over, make sure there's nothing funky going on in here. Um, this is all cool. So basically, just when I'm when I'm looking at stuff that I haven't looked at in a while, I'm just I want to make sure there's nothing in here that y'all can't see. Um, is what that is, and it's fine. Uh, so last time I edited this was in 2012. So I've had this script for at least eight years. Um, I think I had it longer than that. Um, but I think this is also maybe from a different. thing. Yeah, I don't think I've got that. That directory doesn't exist here. I think this is from an old computer. I maybe should have put that in there. Um, all right, so this is going to take me a minute to figure out. Yeah, see, I don't have that development directory doesn't exist. This, this directory Whoops. Does not exist. So these are old notes. Um, so I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this. I like this better these days. These are old notes from, from Abacus. A-B-A-C-U-S, which is my old computer. Um, Yeah, so, okay, so we're just gonna, um, I don't really even remember where, I didn't go look at a couple things here real quick, bear with me one second, sorry folks, you stand by, uh, because I moved some stuff. I haven't done work on this stuff again in months and months. And like, that was the last time I ran the script. I don't even remember when the last time I worked on the script one. It may have been April actually though, cause I, I've got some live coding stuff. Actually, I'm sure that's when it was. Um, let's see, let's get vault. I just need to do this stuff over here. Um, oh, okay, here we go. So you gotta remember where stuff is. Uh, so, and this is something I'll probably, like I'm not sure if I'm gonna do differently next time I have a, a set up a machine. Um, but I, I created a, a warehouse directory off the root and then a git vault directory in there. There's some other stuff in warehouse that I'm not gonna open up because some of it but it might be work related. I don't know. Um, and it's fine, but whatever. Um, uh, I haven't seen this stuff. Bungie API tools? I haven't done that in years. Um, Photoshop scripts? Yeah. Um, actually. Oh, 15 was when I moved over to this computer. So they're all going to be 2015. Um, so here's here's my, here's my script. Uh, okay, so let's go ahead and try and test this. So I'm going to bring us to the desktop. Um, Right. Yeah. So this is a this is a naked repository. There's no thing in there. It's just the it's just the you know whatever. Um, bear get bear repository. Um, so I'm gonna go to the desktop. It check out. It check out. Warehouse. What am I doing? Is that not autocomplete or I'm doing something funny? Oh, get pull. Uh, see, I don't use get a lot, folks. Get new repo from remote. Get an it, add relative files, get an R. How do you? Clone. Get clone. That's what I'm trying to do. Right? That's better. 
been a long time since I've actually, like, I work in some Git repos, but it's been, I don't, I haven't pulled down a new repo in forever. Um, there we go. Uh, give this a minute. So there's a bunch of stuff in here um, that's a whole bunch of tests. For the various different cameras um, that I've used over the years. Uh, and one of the things we can actually do is go ahead and suck down a file. I'm assuming this is going to work. This is first, literally the first time I've tried this. Do it live! Um, yeah, I'm not, I'm not super, I don't, I, I did, I was a sole developer for the longest time and still the vast majority of my work is sole development. So my Git practices are not good for people who work on teams or whatever. No, one title. All right. Uh, I'm going to guess it's in here and guess it's in here and look at that. Ooh, it put a whole bunch of crap in there. It's probably all empty, right? How big is that? 107 meg. Ooh, that's grainy as all get out. Yeah, so I, I fired it up once. I'm gonna look for the smallest one here. I think I got a short one. 394 meg. Why is that? Four meg, four gig, 28 meg. These are in a weird order. I don't know what these LRV files are. Um, but it should be. So yeah, so 28 meg. So I, I, I just shot a really quick one um, because I know that um, I'm gonna get, uh, where am I going, desktop import. Yeah, so here's my tests. Like I've got all these test scripts and then I've got sample data, so like, you know, there's already, there's already five gig of files in there because I wanted, there's movies in there, there's photos in there. It's all the stuff that I'm using for my raw tests. Um, so uh, let me just make sure. Oh, that's beautiful. There you go. Super flattering angle. Uh, how close that? Quit. There we go. So that's giving my test. Um, so I'm going to come in here, right? We're going to go into import photos. Why is that taking so long? That's concerning. I term crashed on me the other day. Oh, maybe, I don't know. No, I don't know. I'm just seated into it. Is the, I think I've got my, so I use ZSH for my shell. And there's a command in there that shows the repo. I wonder if that's, okay, so that's alive. Does this get there faster? Nope. What the hell? Uh, let's look at the terminal. Let's see what the terminal gives us. Oh, that is not a good font. Um, I am concerned about that. Oh, that would still, that's still in the ZSH shell. Okay. Um, want to just give up yet? What the hell? Why is Adobe desktop service burning? Git. Okay. Yeah. So it's running a Git command right now. So what's happening on all three of those. So I've got three windows open and it's, Chewing on get. I guess I could 
Here, watch, hopefully. Terminate. Actually, I don't know if that's gonna leave the process zombie or not, but we'll find out. Or my activity monitor, here we go. Uh, yeah, it might still be gone. This is crazy. I don't understand. This is unexpected. I don't know what to do here. Uh, I mean, if I can't use the terminal, wait a minute. So now we're going to risk it. Uh, desktop. Input. Like there's nothing that crazy in there. I mean, there's a bunch of files. Oh, maybe it's the, it doesn't like that there's so many gigs of stuff in there. I don't, I don't understand this. Um, huh. That is surprising. I'm not freaked out by it as much anymore because I saw Git running in that uh, the activity monitor. And I had three of them running. But like, what? Um... Uh, get an it junk test one. I mean, gets working. I don't know. Well, so what we can do, hang on, so we're working. I'm just gonna let that go, um, and I am going to copy over everything into a new directory. Um, the trick is, I mean, I guess I could kill those processes. I feel risky doing this, but. Let's see if this comes back to life when I kill all of them. just completely freaks out. Oh, I've only got 14 gig left? Oh, I've been sucking down videos. Gotta stop that. Force quit them. Okay, well, let's see if this is the one that does it. Yep. Got our LS. Still choked because it's trying to reprocess again. Yeah, there it is. All right, so we're gonna kill that. That one's actually okay for right now. Ah, that's super weird. I that is new. I don't know what's going on. Um, I'm gonna quit out of that or just kill it because uh, the process was running even though the terminal is closed. And I'm just gonna copy this stuff to a new directory, um, old school version control. and we'll go from there. So, uh, I'm just gonna make a dev folder here. And then, yeah, cause I can't, so amusingly I can't, what'd be great is if I could just go in there and delete the git repo, but I would need the terminal to do that. Oh, actually, you know what? I wonder if we could do this. I, I wanna try something. Um, Because can we ls in there? Yeah. So we don't have, if we don't go into the directory, git doesn't fire to try and do that command line thing. 
Um, I've, I've been debating whether or not I want to keep that there. And I, I think you all saw it a second ago, but if we, um, uh, if we go to the desktop, uh, get init junk two. If we go into junk, so this in ZSH, I'm, I'm sure there's a way to do it in, in uh, bash, whatever your shell is. Uh, I use ZSH because it's the first place that I saw this, um, but it it basically does a, a get status for you, and you can do all kinds of different stuff in there um, and shows it up. But the trick is, if you've got a big repository, it can take a while to to jump into your to get your commands. I've never seen it last like that before. I, that's that's super crazy. Um, I've been debating whether or not I want to keep that there. It's super handy and it's really nice. Um, cause like if you, if you make a change, um, you know, it gives you, it gives you little things depending on if you change stuff or if you deleted stuff or whatever. So it's like, it's, it's slick, it's nice, but not at the cost of that. So, um, I don't know. I'll need to think about that a little bit more. Uh, so let's get rid of jump to, uh, and then actually let's do this. Yeah, so um, I'm starting to figure out what, like, how I want to name this stuff. Um, so I'm just going to do this. Oh, actually, no, no, no. So what I can do, sorry, I just remembered what I could do. I don't have to copy anything because because I can. Um, list into that directory. Don't go into the directory on, don't go into the directory on. Um, I can just delete um, import photos. I can just delete the git directory. So it's no longer a git repository and then I'll go ahead and clear. I should actually, I should be able to get into it now, right? Yep. There you go. So it's no longer a git repo once you take that, that directory out of there. Um, and then I'm just going to clean up the other two uh, git attributes and git ignore. Um, so yeah, that's what it is. Git, git was choking on all that data. I've, I've not seen that before. Um, who knows? Anyways, uh, so now I have to figure out what the easiest way So I'm just going to do the work because I'm not in the repo anymore and then copy it in, clone down the repo, copy it in, and then try and fire the commands remotely, I guess. You know what I need? What I need. It's a flag. Um, Hey, thanks, Steve. Uh, yeah, I did. I did some playing around, so hopefully it's it's getting there. Um, the is, I shouldn't be as hot in the mic. Can you tell a difference? And is the, the music's balanced? Um, yeah, I think what I'm going to do is I want to solve for that. Like I want to do this work. Yeah, I guess we should go ahead and do that work. Okay. Um, I'm trying to think of the, the stuff because like what, it, what I'm thinking I'm going to do is build a, um, cool. Is the music too low? I guess is the other question. Is it like distracting in the background? Would be a good question I should ask. Um, I want to build a switch that lets me turn that on and off so that if it fights me, I can turn it off. And if it's, um... <clears throat> yeah, it's probably fine, Steve. Uh, I appreciate it. The, if it, I don't know. Let me know if you think it should go up a little bit or down. I'm sorry, folks. The, I'm getting some input here from the stream gods, uh, about how to do stuff. Steve is a stream god. 
Uh, yeah, so I want to build a switch, and so what I'm actually going to do right now is uh, I want to make a note of that, of things to do for the stream. Make a uh, switch, config switch, turn off on the git status line in ZSH. Because then what I can do is if I if I run into the thing with a repo, if I'm I'm not digging it, I can I can. Just configure it because I could go in right now. Actually, I do want to work it. I, I do want to work in the repo. So uh, let me go figure out how to do that. Um, that's not what I was expecting to do. Uh, that happens sometimes when you're doing work. This could almost be yak shaving, except that this is getting me back into my repo, which I think is worth it. Um, So that is, where is that? I think that is in ZSHRC, which I've got in these RC files, also in my warehouse. Um, give me one second, and let me just make sure there's nothing silly going on with that file. I don't think there would be. Um, the vim command for D down right control D yeah that's all good that's the path okay this isn't the right file but I'll show you what it is so that's the this is the file that I was looking at um, so I just got to figure out where so this this is the config file the main zshrc file um, Plugins can be found. Okay, so this is going to be it. AWS Git helpers, I'm guessing, in AWS functions. It's probably in one of those. Um, I've got AWS custom. Okay, here's the path getting set. Blah, 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 blah. So that's the end of the file. Um, or that's the end of the file. Uh, that's Perl stuff. I, that was a weird one to figure out. Um, so let's look for that. AWS Git helpers. Um, is that right? Plugins. Yeah, so again, let me burn this off to the side for one second. Yeah, so here's, now, GL, grab the initial output from the git log and reverse it. No, this is a term, that's a terminal command that I did, Never mind. Uh, okay, I still don't know where it is. Uh, stand by. Custom, I think it's down there. Oh, I wonder if it's in that. All right, one more time, stand by. Oh, it's a directory, so. Oh, of course it is. Uh, all right, give me a second. I'm just gonna look over here for a second and I'll bring it back up when we find it. So it's not in RC. Themes. That probably makes a lot of sense. Yep, let's give you it. All right. Uh, so under our custom, under themes, um, the original theme that I was using was called Jonathan. Uh, and I made my own version of it so I could tweak it around and do whatever with it, and it would just be a separate thing. Um, 
We're just gonna add this for a second. We'll see what it's like. Um, so all the Git stuff or all the it's it's ugly to mess with. Um, a bracket you can use so this is like this shows you all of the stuff that happens to make the prompt set prompt modify get prompt let's see if we can use extended characters look nicer type in the title bar finally the prompt okay so this is where we're actually making the prompt be ugly, but we'll do it. Aha, here we go. So this one got commented out, right? Get prompt status, get prompt info. Yes, yeah, so, okay, this is it right here. Um, so it's, it's actually calling these commands, get prompt status and get prompt info which, are these in here? No, I, I don't know where those commands are coming from. Um, somewhere in the LS and the magic is the SH. But so all I'm gonna do to get us working is grab this, grab this. Cause we can, so right now you can see here's, uh, This part of it right here is, I wonder where that first little line comes from. Pure as it tells, so I don't know. Ah, whatever, who knows. Um, it switches to blue, which is right here. And then here's our date. So here's our date. And there's a space and then this get, get prompt status, which is this. And then the info, which is this. And then it flips to a new line. And then you can see um, the rest of this stuff down here. Display exit code right, whatever. Um, all, all the rest of this stuff is all the rest of this stuff. So all we're going to do is we just duplicated the line. And now I'm just gonna yank this stuff out. And then, so what we should be able to do now, I'm just gonna open a new window. You could uh, get it going another way. Oh, whoa, whoops. Oh, wait a minute. Oh, that wasn't a comment. Yeah, that's all kinds of broken. Um, so the other thing we're gonna do, which we should have done, First, still alive? Oh God, there's still something there. Undo more. There we go. That's probably it. I forget. There's a way to do like export or source or something and have it um, have it reload for you. I just exit and do it again. Uh, okay, so we're back to there. So now what we're gonna do is. We're gonna accidentally hit a hotkey apparently to start Spotify. That's what that was. Um, see, this is actually in a repo, but I'm still, I'm still just gonna do this. Let's do it right though. Copy that to that with back on it. There we go. Uh, cool. Now, let's try this again. AWS from Jonathan Theme. This is definitely not what I was expecting to do, but it's a thing that I want to do, so that's, just, that's why we're doing it. Finally, the prompt, why did that? Full aggressive. All right. Uh, why, oh why? That should have been a comment.
I understand. Maybe it's because it was going to the new line? Is it inside in type inside some type of multi-line thing? I don't know. Um we're gonna do this. Uh Nexus, which is this computer. Prompt. Customize prompt. gonna do um yeah it's still for zsh that's fine but what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna rename this file to put a space here which will move it up towards the top of my zsh stuff um okay so bye bye so now let's see what happens if we go here we exit out of that if we bring it back. Uh, and so actually in that ZSH directory, there's a git repo, right? This was a git, or sorry, this is, so we do git status. We're in a git repo, but we're not showing that thing anymore. Okay, that's cool. It also feels like it's going faster in general. So yeah, we're gonna do that. Now what we can do, it, <clears throat> excuse me, is on, so on the desktop, I'm actually going to blow away what we had there. Uh, CD warehouse get vault my initials import photos PWC copies a path it's a little script I wrote at one point function whatever um so we're gonna go to desktop get clone this wow that took a long time to get there uh, and then this will take us a second. Checking out files. All right. Hydrate. I would play some music here. I guess play the water. I should, yeah, I need to, I need to just sit on the stream for a little while and test different, uh, different things. I'm not gonna do that right now because we're actually doing stuff, but, um, uh, oops, see, I added a bunch of files back into NV alts directory and it's just a little slow. It could be because the gets doing the stuff too, but like, um, Large file support, export drives with archive, Canon vlog, ingestion. Okay. All night. So let's just see through this again. So what are you? It's the Perl script. When you have to update the script and already push a new version of production, use all that junk. Okay. Just make sure to change the version number. If you've just made an update and you want master, yeah. Yeah, so one thing that's not good about the way that I set this up. Oh, 
Um, is that actually there? User local AWS, is that a thing? No, okay, so I don't know where it is now. Uh, wait, user local bin, right? Rep import. Uh, yeah, so it's just sitting directly in there. It's not a sim link anymore. Um, get rid of that. Development version, that's not right. Config files, yeah. So the trick is, has this finished yet? Yeah, okay, cool. So let's see what we got. Uh, Perl scripts. Current deployment is simply to copy that file to there and make sure it's executable. It's self contained. Config is there, testing. Make sure that file exists. See, this is not a good, this is not a good way to do this. I have to keep a file that's in there um, live. So I kind of, okay, so let's do this. Yeah, so this isn't the way to deploy anymore. All right, so I'm actually gonna say, go read the readme. It's a danger of documentation, right? Um, but this way I've got a note in my in my notes to go look for this. Um, okay, so I'm gonna have to bounce around in here a little bit because it's it's been a minute. Um, I know the one thing that I do want to do is so this config file. Um, is where I set up where everything goes, um, right? Yeah, so, and this is another thing. I've got the single config file that I use for development and for um, production, which is not good because uh, it's super dangerous. <laughs> um, so let me do this. Prod inputs. Prod. Well, so here's what's the best way to organize this? I want to organize this a little bit better. Um, Outputs, prod, local drive, prod server mounts. Development. Yeah, because what I really what I want is so the trick is sometimes I, and this is another trick, like sometimes I want to go to the local drive, sometimes I want to go um the server directly like I'm gonna need to get like I've downloaded a bunch of stuff for my phone and I want to move it into the archive but I don't have enough space to actually make the move on the computer as you can see I only have like 17 gig left or whatever um, so that's the prod stuff So we're gonna just comment all this out for now. Oh, come on. All right, old fashioned way. I'm gonna put two here just to remind me, hopefully, that that's a thing. 
have to be, I just, I have to be really careful with this. Um, this is not at all the way you want to do this. Um, but it's, I mean, this is working with legacy code is what it is. Uh, you know, again, I wrote this however many years ago and it's not, it works and it's fine. Um, so I just don't update it. Um, or I haven't, I haven't rebuilt it, right? There's a bunch, there's a bunch of, of tests and details and stuff in there. Um, that you could redo and so I could just rebuild all the tests and then kind of use those to, to work with. Um, but we're gonna put this path in here. So our, well, so it should run, I think of that do not, I'm still gonna set this up just in case, right? So, temp, uh, dev, right? Dev temp, temp dev, dev temp. For whatever reason, that sounds right right now. Um, and so what we're gonna do is input photos, input, Videos, yeah, D E O S, I'm P T. Output photos, output videos. So we're going to go into, can you see that? Yeah. Um, Input root dir. Okay, that actually does anything. And then it needs an input, it needs a, those. A photo and an output. Or output for photos and output for videos. Photos to kill. So I'm gonna get rid of those, those are old. Um, we're gonna do this. We're gonna do this. So we don't need input videos. Input. Files. All right. Input files. Output photos. Why is my tab? Make sure this file exists. Testing is done by improve. Okay, yeah, so this, I, I semi-trust this documentation. Um, but I've also got the config set up so that nothing is touching my production stuff. I don't know what that debug one was either. Um, to do. Overview. Let's do this. Figure out what the debug one in the config file does. I I may never do that. Um, all right. Ah. So here we go. Um, let's just look at it. Uh, personal tool for inputting things. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, regardless of file type, configuration is done here, so that's still alive. Oh, add a conflict number to the files that don't have EXIF data. I should do that at some point. 
but it hasn't been a problem yet. So maybe never. Make sure your conflict handle number can go by 9.99. It's unlikely. So that's that's another one that I was like, I used to think about stuff. It's like, oh, here's all the possibilities, and like, it's good to think out thoughts, but like, there's, I'm never going to worry about files going over 9.99 until it happens, and the first time, and that's just never going to happen. Um, so oh, here we can do this. We make that. 3.9. Oh wait, so we should do this. Um, get it status, right? Round master. Oh! Is it just that there's all those images in there? Because there's not that many files. So is it just doing a hash across all of the files to see what's changed? I don't know why it's doing that. Um, the good news is it's that's not a command that's running for the prompt itself, so I can control C and kill it. When it was at the prompt level, I couldn't kill it because it was I didn't have access to the prompt, like it hadn't come back alive. I don't think. I'm pretty sure I was right. I think I tried it. Um shit. Uh whatever. I'll figure that out later. Um, for now, let's just make the thing go. So I'm going to make this 3.9, um, which is also in here. Oh, see, this is weird. Sublime Text is okay with it. It's marking stuff that's changed. So that's 3.9. Okay. Um, here's, I mean, here's the script. It just, this is all the stuff that it does. And this is not at all the way that it was. At one, I wouldn't do it in Perl. And I wouldn't do it in the object oriented, uh, I think it's called moose. So I use moose here. Yeah. The moose package to make it more um, object oriented. Um, yeah, so whatever. Okay, whatever. We're, we're just going to run it at this point. Um, now that we've been banging around for an hour. Uh, so, proof for both. See what happens. So, verified directories. That's one of the, so the important thing for me about this script, um, and the other reason that I'm not, um, I guess not super interested in rebuilding it or whatever, but also like whatever, but I've got this test suite behind it that every time I add a new camera, I add a new file. So that's what I'm doing, right? That, that's the whole point of this. Um, and it just does a whole bunch of different checks for me across a whole bunch of different things. Everything that I could think of that could possibly freak out is in here. Um, doesn't mean it's perfect, but so far it hasn't fried me. Um, I haven't lost images. I haven't, it, it's been fine. Um, I mean, it's, and I've been using it for years. There's a, oh, info. I thought, I thought I saw bad stuff happening. Um, I think, I think this thing actually chokes immediately if it, uh, if it sees a bad one. Um, but yeah, so it's copying files back and forth because it needs to be in an input directory and output directory. Like some of the stuff that I'm, this, tests a little bit is kind of testing the file system a little bit more than I would do these days. Um, Cause it's just, it's like making sure that files actually get moved and actually exist. So it's like test, it's testing that the, the copy command works. Um, I would still potentially do that for an integration test, but I wouldn't necessarily do that for all of these, um, these unit tests basically like the, the that's, this was very early in my testing career, um, and I I just wouldn't do it the same way. Basically, I would I would have much more limited and much more kind of units um, of tests to, to run against. Um, yeah, because like it loads a sample config every time, and it builds a sample config, and it does machinations off of that, and then runs a process, and then makes sure that the file and like basically what it does is it runs the process. And it makes sure that the right files show up in the right place. So it's got a it's got a known input and a known output, 
at the file system level. Um, yeah, known input, known config, known output, or expected output um, in the tests, and you match that as it goes through. Um, which again is not is not at all how I do it now, um, but at the at the time that's how I figured out how to do it. And it's the the it's it's safe because as long as you get all of the uh, uh, what's the things the exception cases, or as long as you get all the cases, like it's it's pretty solid because it's actually testing the the functionality of the thing. Um, there are gotchas there though if you that it's like with any like you're just as likely to get bit by a gotcha in a unit test as you are in an integration test if you're not testing the right things right so um it's there's no i don't think there's a win either way on one of those uh the difference one of the differences being though if the unit tests weren't bouncing off the file system and weren't copying stuff and all over the place then this like this test suite would have already been done um so just just take some time. Um, taking a long time. Uh, but it's, so it's working on a movie file right now. Um, so those are the bigger files. And I guess it's hashing it. I don't really know. Um, yeah, it's funny. Like some of these info copied and verified. Yeah, copied, copied and verified from all that path. Yeah, so the copied and verified is basically the, uh, when you run it for real, it says, you know, copied and verified and then, or the file already exists in the other location are kind of the two major outputs. Um, so we'll give us a minute here and see if it, uh, if it finishes up, hopefully. It seems like it should. Um, what's the other thing I was gonna do while we do that? Uh, yeah, so we, I'm not touching any of these right now. The, the, the config file was set up for those just in case something went weird. Um, and even if something really, oh my god, I'm only down to 7.9. I gotta do something about that. That's getting close to problems. I just downloaded a bunch of Twitch videos. Oh, are these, how big are these? Not too bad. But it shouldn't be that low, I don't think. Uh, um, I'm going to move some files while that's happening. Uh, oh, you know what? I kind of want to move to a different place, though. I've, I've got a NAS set up, uh, free NAS, that I really like. Um, but I want to put a different network share on it because the network shares I've been using have all been Mac. Um, and now I've got a Windows machine in the mix because I'm using a Windows machine to stream. Um, and you're not supposed to have, I'm just a little bit, we I'm just a little bit wary about changing the, because I've been, I think I was using AFP or whatever the that file system is. So I'm going to switch it to Samba and I'm just a little bit wary of actually doing that change like I'm sure like it's all in the file system so it should be fine but like also the file systems are just kind of all over the place so it'd be nice to start from scratch um so I'll be doing that and right now I'm selling for time is what's happening uh, I hope this isn't as anticlimactic as anticlimactic as I think it's going to be but it might be um I'm just gonna leave that out right now. I like that's fine. Um, inbox. Uh, I'm gonna throw this up in the corner so I can keep an eye on it. What else do we got going on? Twitch ideas. Let's see if there's anything else we can knock out while we're doing that. Um, oh, Alpha Pie's Limes form. We did that. Where's my done list? So this is just uh, I just got really tired all of a sudden. Um, which I need is. So this is just a list of some stuff to potentially mess with. 
Uh, one of the ones I had actually already done was this one, uh, which Alpha uh, just made a little form. Oh, it moved. Process file one of one. Now it's doing something else. Why is it so slow? I didn't think the test suite took that long. And also, how many are there? Thirty, and then a ninety-nine for cleanup. Yeah, that's another one that I did. I ran a a, a test suite at the end to do cleanup and all the stuff, which is another one that like they should. I, I think they all kind of take care of themselves, but that just kind of makes it happen for real to make sure. Which is another thing that like that shouldn't be necessary, um, especially because if you run them in a random order. If something was left in the file system, it would be it would still be sitting there if that 999 didn't pick it up. I really don't know what's going on. Five gig. Okay, yeah, I'm just gonna move some stuff. Your disk space is critically low. Yes. <laughs> I understand. I've been watching that. I don't know why it's still going down. Is this test eating stuff? It must be. How big is that file? Oops. Ow. Oh, that last one. Oh, it's five gig. That's a very large test file. I gotta stop it. It's gonna eat itself. Oh, I should have done this. Ah, oh, man. One at a time. Um. Yes, I get it. It's almost low. Output. How big are you? Five gig. There's five gig for you. I don't know what else is eating all that space. items deleted. I ripped through a bunch of uh, old stuff on a server at one point and it was like 100,000 items deleted. It's like whew, makes you a little nervous. Uh, your space is almost full. Save space by optimizing storage. Go away. Optimizing storage is... There we go. Back up. Getting alert a little bit as it's emptying trash out. That was concerning. That's not good to do to a disk <laughs> or to an operating system. Um, yeah, 
Yeah, that's that's not so. See, it's still going up. Still bleeding trash. There we go. Okay. 14 gigs. I guess the rest of that. I need to run a disk scan to figure out what all that stuff is. Crap. Okay, so. It's gonna take seven more minutes for that other stuff to move up. Um, that'll give me 50 gigs worth of space to clear. Like I just, I can't run that test suite again um, on on this little disk space. And so I've got to move this other stuff out of the mix. Um, what else can I do in the meantime? Uh, I mean, I got a list of stuff, but like, I kind of don't want to get started on anything because like. This has been an hour of doing nothing, but like, hey, welcome to development sometimes, right? Um, uh, oh, well, I can show you here the JavaScript alphabet, alphabetized form. So um, I'm making little JavaScript tools for me to do, uh, to do things. So like if I want to alphabetize strings, that's what that does. So uh, that's what that is. But I finished that the other day. wasn't wasn't awful. Um, wasn't bad at all. And so I just don't know if I want to. So I've got we've got all these ideas. Um, so for review, actually, let me move that down just for fun. Um, where is Twitch ideas? So I've never really done React stuff or. Uh, any of these things, so I'm gonna look at them at some point. Just nuke that, but I'm gonna throw that to our for review. Um, is it clean, right? Yep. Uh, make config switch. I'm gonna move that down. I'm not gonna spend all this time just ordering these. Uh, oh, you know, so what we can do. We got five minutes. Um, let me just look. So I'm just gonna look. So I, I've got this GIF page that I built that loops over directory of all my animated GIFs. And then it basically lets me click really quick. And then hopefully a window's gonna open somewhere. Yeah. With a copy of that, so I can drag it to Twitter, or I can drag it to Discord, or I can drag it to wherever. Because um, you can't you can't drag from this window onto Discord or onto Twitter. Um, so I just wanted to have my gifts, put them in there, and go boop and get through it. So that's what that is. What I've been thinking about doing is, by the time I describe this, we won't have to mess with it. Is um, adding tags to this in the AXIF data and seeing if I can pull those tags back out and use them for searching. Um, so, uh, I wonder if I've got, if I, uh, let's bring another one up. Yeah, I've got EXF tool installed. Um, Read and write metadata from files. Okay, cool. Uh, so, interesting. Because what what we could do uh, where do I want to put this? Um, I want to put it on the desktop right now because I'm tired. But that's not a good way to do this. Um, but I'm gonna do that anyways. Gifts, gift source, you. Uh, I'm just gonna copy you right on over the desktop. I don't know what happens if we just run it. I'm just stalling for time right now. Uh, so here, here's our metadata for that file. Um, EXIF tool I've used a bunch before. It's really good for um, for dealing with metadata for photos and videos. Uh, it's actually what I use in this import script that we may touch later. Um, oh yeah. 
slight difference in space. Um, so how do we add... Metadata. Whoa. Extract basic right. Writes artist tag to AJPEG since no group is specified. The XF artist will be written and all other existing artist tags will be updated with the value of me. Write to multiple files, write to all files and directories, write multiple tags. Hmm, okay. Undefined print common metadata for all images in directory. I need a one button command to make stuff go. Um, print center canon. Recursively extract metadata on C. Save thumbnail image. Recursively JPEG. Extract all author related. Extract. Okay, so the right is basically just dash exif tool tags. So they're separate tag. Yeah, so let's see if we got tags here that we could use. Um, Oh crap, I meant to start up. Uh, yeah, listen a minute. Um, this is my Hugo site. Wow, I am tired. Uh, where am I going? Which uh, alanwsmith.com prod. Hugo new live stream today index.md Ah, uh, now I can come here. Oh, you know what would be a better use of our time? Is to actually go back and run that test now. So I need, okay, so here's the trick. It's gonna take a little while to run that test again. So those files have moved. So I can delete them from here once I verify they're here. I should have used rsync. Oh, this freaks me out when I don't use rsync. I don't know why. And weirdly, it's a thing that bothers me less now than it used to. So thank you, Lithium. Um, empty trash. I'm tired, so I have to delete the right ones. I'm like 30% sure that I did. Hey, we got some space. Okay, so now we're gonna do two things. We're gonna run this again, which I was gonna take a few minutes. Yeah, prove is just how you run the test. Um, but then the other thing that we're gonna do is I want I want to command, so I just made, um, let's close all this shit for right now. Just cause I don't have to think about it. I'm not gonna play with this yet. I'm gonna do some more re research on that. That's gonna be a deeper thing. Um, let's clean up a little bit. All right, that's gonna keep going. Get rid of this one. So, so, I was actually, should've cut that open. Uh, let me clean up that GIF real quick. I'm getting better about cleaning up quickly. Um, so what I just did a second ago, so I was in my, let me get break this out so I can watch it. Put that over there, I'll let you know when it finishes. Whoops. Put it over there, now I'll let you know when it finishes. Um, so a second ago,
uh, product. So this is the this is where I, I host my website, right? Or this is the local version of my website. Um, so here's prod. If I'm in here and I, it's it's off of Hugo, so if I do Hugo serve um, and then come up here, whoops, exit, and then go here and go to localhost thirteen thirteen. Here's the local version that Hugo is running. So this this is this is the home of my website. Uh, what I did just a second ago on that command was see if it's still in memory here. Yeah, Hugo new live stream 2020 slash index All that does is makes a new um, actually I'm gonna run Hugo serve with a dash D, which shows drafts. Uh, and now if we refresh this page, here's a file, right? Live stream 2020-09-24. This is the file that I just made because the way Hugo works is it's just a whole bunch of static files. So this STH command is going to open Sublime Text in my Hugo directory with all my, with all my um, static files. Uh, and where that file is, is now under content. Uh, JKL live stream what did I call it oh that's live coding I call it live stream see okay that's good I did the wrong thing so Here's that file. That's not what we want. We want live coding. Um, so now we're going to delete this. And sometimes that doesn't refresh. So we got to start this over here. Doesn't like it doesn't pick up deleted files. Um, it may be a newer version does. Mine doesn't. Um, which had so. You need to run the Hugo command from this directory to make this work in this format. Um, live coding. Um, but so the trick with this is when I do this, it makes this file cool. But then I've got to go to Sublime Text. I got to open Sublime Text, and I've got to scroll down, and I've got to find the file in all that myth in all that mess. Um, which when you're starting up here, you know, and I could open the file individually with the command line, um, but, and see, right now I'm distracted, distracted not finding it. Um, live coding. So here's the file. Uh, slice about this so I can see what my other, so we're gonna do this, we're gonna call this, Working on on my photo import script. Wow. Live coding. Thank you for that. So if we come over here, let's just see that change. There you go. Uh, drafts, I'm going to leave this true, and this is going to be live coding for the tags. And then this is where I put notes. Um, so one of the things I'm going to do right now, Sublime Text for L is for my local um, tools website. Uh, I've got this checklist, and resize all windows, turn on lights if needed. Um, I'm going to add a note here for my checklist that says um, create and open live coding. Well, I'm just going to street notes. Stream notes. Um, because what I want to what I want to do. Oh yeah, and for those who haven't seen my checklist, I'm going to be doing more of these. I think as time goes by, but this is all the stuff that I do before to fire up a Twitch um, cast. I did a I did a live coding session where I set this page up and just find, found the CSS to do the buttons. Um, so here's the thing, nothing's in it. So 
as I go through this, if we were actually had done some coding at this point, which we haven't done, um, but, well, so like, whatever, things I found out. Running the git status and in a DSH shell prompt can cause problems. So whatever. I just want to have like some type of notes that I can put up for this stuff. Um, and like I did a decent one. Uh, it's on 30, so we're, oh, we're still stalling for time, but we're still going. So for this one, building a local version of Giphly, which is where I built all those GIF things, like I don't necessarily want to go in this depth necessarily every time, but I would like to have stuff that I do kind of in there. So you get you get basically show notes. Um, the I'm calling them live coding right now. I think I may actually switch them to stream notes. I kind of like that better. Um, yeah, I think I'm gonna do that. That's another thing that's changed for me right now is. I don't mind moving stuff. Like, there's not any traffic going to them anyways, but, like, I'm cool with the idea of, like, renaming these things to stream notes, um, which is a new thing in my brain. I would have, like, it would have freaked me out a while ago. Um, so, still on 30. Uh, so, we got our... So, the thing that I want to see if we can do real quick, and real quick is not the way the stream has been going, um, but as I've got... When... Oh, I wonder if you have to put it on different different folders. But what I was thinking was if you could set up something to watch. Hmm. I was going to say if you could set up something to watch this folder and watch for new things that come into it and then fire it up, but there may be a better way to do that. Um but I kind of like, yeah, I'm stuck waiting on this stuff, so we'll see what's gonna happen. Um, oops, keep that where you can see it. Uh, so I've got this functions thing that I'm building. So here's here's my Hugo deploy. Here's my um, Hugo serve, which you can just do Hugo S, make that HS. HS has no entry. Okay, yeah, so I'm gonna do this HS. So that Hugo serve D I did. If I did, now if I just set right right now, so if I go to anywhere and I go to Hugo S, it moves me to the directory and it fires up the thing. So I can just type Hugo S anywhere and get my local thing running. Uh, it's gonna fight right now because it's already running on a different. Um, it's already running here. Um, but I actually want this command to be hs. Whoops. So let's clear that. Do it again. And so now to run my to run my local thing, hs. So it just changed to the directory and then ran the hugo serve dash d command. Um, and hopefully it's building the site. So we can come here. That took a long time to load. Usually it's super fast. Uh, there we go. Uh, working on my third end punch script live coding. That's what we're doing. Um, so that's cool. That's nice. But what I was thinking we could do is build a command. Well, so let's do this first. Is HN a thing? Nope. Right. Yeah. So we can make ah all tests successful. Test passed. Well, clock. That took a long time. That's what that did. Um, result passed. Okay. Back to this. God, this stream has sucked. Um. Yeah, okay, so I, we'll, we'll do that at some other point. Um, what I want to do is make a command that I can run from anywhere that makes a new Hugo entry for me, and then 
takes me into that directory and opens that file and gives it to me in Sublime Text. That's what I want to have happen. Um, that should be semi straightforward, uh, but it's going to be a few steps and some some debugging. So we're going to stick with this. Um, good lord, yeah, this is an hour of having done nothing. Um, but I mean, other than the fact that we like, it was all stuff that had to do to now get to where we can do this. So welcome to coding. Um, where am I going? I am at a loss. Let's do this and look at the sublime text. So read me, yeah, so test prove, testing is done by running that. Test for both. How um, furl prove one file? Because we don't want to run the full test suite. I think you just do, all right, we're gonna risk it. Um, so under T, I just typed T and it just went straight to that directory. Does it automatically CD into that? I don't think I knew that. Holy crap. Learn something new today. So why not? Ah, see, I want that file open again. Uh, so SDH will launch, launch it for us, but now I gotta find it. I shouldn't have closed it. Play chat JKL live coding for the, yeah, I like stream notes better. I think we're moving stream notes. They learn that you don't type C and just type the name of the directory. Possibly this is a CSH thing. Cool. Uh, so yeah, so I just, I just want to make some straight notes. Uh, and we looked and we saw, so, here, we're going to run this test, I think. Prove verbose t slash 003, so get the autocomplete. Cool. That means we don't have to run the full test suite. And we're going to make a note of that. To run just one test. Call prove with the file name. For example. Sweet. Okay. So. Now what we want to do is we want to write a failing test. I don't know what all those dots and slashes are in there for. Lord, I don't need that right now. Um, and so the way that I'm going to do this to start with is I'm just going to duplicate this test. And then we're going to call it 31 GoPro 8 movie. Cool. And now we can come down here. That's the wrong thing. Throw you over there. And look at this. Um, okay, cool. So begin, it loads the import photos module. Subpass data output. 
Oh, okay, so this... So what I need to do is a couple things. Oh, I should put this in the show notes. <laughs> show notes, whatever. Uh, things don't really get going. Oh, you can't actually see me typing that, can you? Ah, that's funny. It was right there. That's so close. Um, so here's what we need to do. Here's the thing. I'm tired. I'm very tired. I'm surprisingly tired. Oh, it's getting there. Um, But I kind of want to, I'm going to keep going for just a little bit. And the only reason I'm still doing that is because I've got tests. Like, the tireder I get, the more tired I get, the increasingly, like, pff, I can't even use words anymore. The more likely it is that I'm going to do something really off. When I trust the test suite that I've got back behind me. So, um... PQRST. So this is where I just load the the base files. So you just make an input root. Because um, you can have multiple inputs. Um, and then I'm going to just drop that file in there. Where are... Is it this one? This one, three meg, much better than a five gig. I don't know why I had a five gig file in there. That's ridiculous. Yeah, five gigs. So that, that was an iPhone movie. I don't know why I didn't just make a three second one. Um, oh, I think, no, I think they're, sorry. That needed to be five gigs. There is a there is a problem that happens. Yeah, large gigabyte iPhone movie file. There is a problem that happened when iPhone movies were over four gig. I don't remember what it was, but that is why that file is that big. Is because we I needed to have a test that included a giant file. Um, I'm remembering this now. Uh, and again, this is to the test here. Like like I'm. And hopefully, like, if I'd clicked in there and like, oh, I changed the test, or like, I'm not going to go change the test. Um, and hopefully, if, actually, I'm just curious now. Do I have... Okay, so this was a shit test description. This test makes sure that images get moved to the locations for a base level test. Not good. Um... keeping up what the individual things were, and then I stopped. Um, yeah, so that should have been... Like, all this stuff is tricky, right? Um, whatever, we're going to get back to here. Uh, so our file is this one. So we're going to load the module. Set the test specific globals. So 
this is trying to copy. Oh, so that that script copied to two different locations. So that was that was making ten gigabytes worth of data um, because I, I had two video outputs going. So data output output data video a. And so now what we need to do? I'm going to do this. So we need to get all this stuff is controlled based off the metadata of the file. So I got to go get that metadata. And I'm going to do that this way. Uh, T. Sample data inputs. And this is where we get to use EXIF tool. something right now. So this is all the metadata for that file. Uh, and so file mod. So I want to try and use create date if we can, I think. Copy the food essentially. So create date. Well, so sometimes these are going to be the same. And this is one thing. So like you can see all these different date files that are in here, all these date strings. Um, track creation date. This so hopefully this is actually what gets used. Um, right now I'm not super worried about it because the files should be coming at the same time. But like. Um, Make sure track create date is used for GoPros. Oh, see, I really, I kind of need to do that. Um, crap. I'm gonna let this one go because it, again, it should, it, like, it's almost certainly gonna always be okay for getting this stuff in and for doing it right the first time. Um, there is a, there's a case here that I don't know if it would happen that when the script processes, see H cleanup, that should that should probably be there. Um, when the script processes, it goes through, yeah, see, okay. Copy photos to destinations. Is that all the same? See, this is just like, this is a mess. Um, yeah, see, this is, here's the run through the possible ways to pull the data. Um, I'm going to shrink that just a little bit. Yeah, so run run through this this is where that date string gets created is in this conditional set. So the first one is if create date works, grab it. And exif info create date equals matches, so it needs to match. So you check if the thing matches and you check and see if it's the right format. And if so, you pull it out. Then you look for a date time original. Then you look for create date. Then you look for date created. Cause these are all the things that like all the, like the camera manufacturers all do different stuff um, from each other. And then sometimes from themselves, like if you get the Canon S100 and the S120, they may have different ways of dealing with this stuff. So what I really, and so then you get down to file modified date. And then if nothing else is found, move to the missing EXIF date folder. Yeah, so I don't, I don't fall back to anything. I'd, I'd make sure to walk all the way down this tree. And if I don't, if I don't explicitly hit one of those things, I throw it to a folder that says, I don't know what to do with this. You've got to go figure it out. Um, so, but so what I see, what I actually need here is, um, 
is I want to make sure and see this my t my test didn't do a good job of telling me this. I don't know necessarily how it would. Except that actually in the test cuz what see what I need cuz right now the problem is I'm pretty sure the thing that I'm going to want, right? And so you have to make some kind of I, you know, things for this, but like track creation date sounds like the thing that I want to have. That feels to me like when I hit the start button, that's probably when the track creation date goes. Um, there's also meteor created created date, right? Or media create date. So like the duplication is what kind of drives you a little bit crazy because it's like, well, which one of these is the more right one? And is if one if they get out of sync, which one's the one that you should use? Do they ever get out of sync? Or are they just is it like impossible because they're programmed the same? No idea. Um, and good luck if you figure that out or if you're from GoPro, let me know. I would love to know. Um, hopefully it's unimportant and they're all duped. Um, may find one or more tags in the movie data. Warning minor. The extracted embedded option may find more tags in the movie data. So there's apparently another EXIF tag that I can throw at it to get some more stuff. Um, font name, Helvetica. Okay. Uh, audio sim rate balance, time code, video frame rate, 59.94. Okay, cool. Uh... Image height, I wasn't doing 4K, doing 1080. I gotta think about that. I'm already having size problems here, so I don't need necessarily anything here. Yeah, so I'm, I think I'm gonna go with track creation date. Track create date. Cause like the... And, and the thing is, I need to do it in the right order. Because what's this last one? Oh, that didn't stay open. Oh, my eyes, my eyes, my eyes. File modify date. I don't think that's. There's this thing we can search on. Okay, so let's actually, okay, so let's, before we get too deep into this, I need to write the failing test first. It may just fail out of the box. So let me not, let me not get ahead of myself there. It's good, that was helpful refresher for me about how this thing works. Um, but let me, let me just try and get this thing to fail. And so what I'm gonna do, I think track create date is what I'm going to want. And so what that means is that the output paths, I really wish I could make this font bigger um, or smaller, uh, but I feel like that's probably about as small as we want to get on the video. So it's this. and change both of them. And then 2058. And then the 01 is gonna be what it is, except is it, what's the format of it? MP4. So that's what we wanna have happen. Um, Oh, somewhere up here, we need to tell it. I forget where you tell it. Which, here we go. Load data samples S, we wanna do T. That was our new, that's where we dropped a new folder. Um, 
And then, but the tr one question I have though is there's different sample configs. But I didn't see that. It's not in there. I don't know. I'm not going to worry about that. Uh, we'll see what happens. I'm, I'm just looking for a broken test. Uh, sorry to get, whoops. We come up a couple directories. One more. Prove, prove, verse T031. Go from me to T. Okay, see what happens. Boom. Okay, I like seeing right here. That's what we want. Uh, and so right at the start, I saw this, which is test however loaded sample config default INI. Cool. Um, again, this is one of those, like I'm messing, I like I have to do all this testing on the file system or I'm doing all this testing on the file system. And it's like, really the only thing I should have to do is have one of the files sitting in the file system and just grab the EXIF data from it and process it that way. And just look at the EXIF, EXIF, EXIF data. Cause then I know how to make the paths. Like as long as I'm getting the dates right, that's the thing that matters. That's not how this is set up. So I'm just continuing on with it um, because I'm worried. All right, it's not, it hasn't been worth my time because again, I change this once every couple of years to go back and rewrite the entire thing. So legacy code. Um, yeah, so I'm just gonna read through this real quick, uh, just to re familiarize myself. We're starting a run. We made sure that our direct our output directories exist. Um, run a pre-flight. Pre-flight makes sure the in, input directory exists. Found a photo to process, so that's what we're trying to process. So that's cool. Um, Skip miss input directory. Yeah, so I didn't have an input directory B. There's just an A. That's fine. Um, okay, one initial load test. So starting copy photos of destination. Copies ran, created directory, right? So it needed to make nine September, whatever. Copied and verified that to, oh wait, that looks like it went to the right place. Copied and verified from root A to, oh, I wonder if I didn't change the first part of the thing, but that's what's happened. Uh, copy and verified, yeah, okay, cool. Run the entire routine, but it's not, yeah, so it's June, I missed this part right here. Um, oh, it was the 24th of June, it was the last time I did this. Uh, so here's the question. But it moved it. Oh, I know why. So I actually know why I didn't, I have that cleanup turned on and off. Is so I can actually go look. Um, so I can manually go look at the file and see if it moved. Um, it did. Uh, so that actually worked. And now I wanna know why it worked. Um, let's get, th uh, this is, I think gonna make us green. Nope, 2020. See what this does. So again, this blows away everything and then redoes it. Okay, all tests successful. So something in there is already it's already catching. Uh oh, did I close that here? I closed that data, didn't I? Boop, 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 boop. Uh T sample data T. I just want to see which one is, is catching. And then I want to explicitly, explicitly, explicitly 
move it to the one that I want. Um, because I don't know what. So create date, I don't think was it. Nope. Date time original, I didn't see. Nope. Create date this way. Uh -huh, right there. See, that's that's probably fine. Um, This is weird. Safari is updated now. Now it's putting the uh, icons for stuff. Oh, it's not. It's mushing them smaller. Oh, that's interesting. So you can actually. Oh, that's pretty good. That's pretty good. Create that. Yeah. Is answer probably first? Yes. Yeah, see, the, like, is the create date the file? Yeah, file create date, yeah, so it's like, uh, and close that, and close that, close that, close that, close that, close that, stay there. So I want to move, I want to move, Yeah, it's funny because create date, ah, oh, see it just, I mean, this is working and it's working and it's fine. It's always been fine, but like, it still freaks me out. Um, Cause really what I want to do now is go through every single one of the examples and see if there's a better thing to use other than create date. Um, and there's probably not cause there's file date stuff. Part of me wants to switch it to the track stuff, but I, but again, I don't know if that's better or worse. Like maybe that's not the right thing to do. Um, I'm just gonna keep an eye on it. Like this is, it's working. That's fine. They got the test to pass. Like it, it ended up in the right place. Um, and in my code, that is the first thing that I'm doing for all the other files that are working. So. As much as it looks like this would be more specialized uh, and like maybe safer in a weird circumstance like so I, the, the, the reason I get a little caught up in it is like if you have a file that's downloaded and you've got the raw file and then you move that raw file to another server in a way that didn't keep the file modification and create uh, timestamps the same and modified those. If that changed it, then your data's off. However, I always just suck these things straight down. So it's like the first thing I do is, is put these dates on. It's gonna be fine. It's gonna be fine. Um, <laughs> so that was a very long time to write one test and change two lines of code to have it pass and to be done. That's all of the development we did today. Um, so that's awesome. We, we took some notes. It's fine. That's all cool. We figured out how to what? Uh, figured out how to uh, watch the thing. Um, disable our Prompt get problem. I swear, I think it just goes faster in general. Even so, even on non-git directories, I think it goes faster. 
So yeah, that's gone. Like I, I'm kind of, I'm kind of gonna miss that. But um, well, you could actually, so you could set it up. Well, they, no, it's just the same thing. It's like you would set it up to only look at the get directory and only process it what's there, but it's the same thing because um, it, somehow it's doing get status and then it's not and then whatever. Um, that's gonna do it for this evening. As I have said, I'm a little tired. And that was not the best one. Uh, but that's how it goes sometimes. That's just part of it. So we'll, uh, we'll see y'all next time. Have a good one. Be kind and uh, be kind. See ya.